Chapter 2. Adaptations in Plants. Get into. Take the correct option for each of the following. Number 1. A plant that grows in deserts. Number 2. A plant that grows on mountains. Number 3. A plant that grows in water. Number 4. A plant that grows in coastal areas. Plants have different types of varieties growing all over the earth. Different parts of the earth have different temperatures, climatic conditions, and rainfall patterns. Since plants cannot move from one place to another, they develop characteristics that help them to survive in their particular growing places. Habitats and Adaptations of Plants The place where an organism lives in nature is called its habitat. Plants growing in different habitats have different features that help them to survive in their natural surroundings. The features that help a plant or an animal to survive well in its natural surroundings are called adaptations or adaptive features. On the basis of their habitats, plants can broadly be categorized into two groups. Terrestrial plants, plants that grow on land. Aquatic plants, plants that grow in water. Terrestrial plants. The word terrestrial means living on land. Plants that grow on land are called terrestrial plants. Forests, grasslands, mountains and deserts are examples of some terrestrial habitats. Plants in forests. Forests are very large areas covered with trees. They are found in places of almost all kinds of weather. Some trees that grow in forests remain green throughout the year. Such trees are called evergreen trees. New leaves keep growing on them throughout the year. So, these trees are not completely bare in any season. Evergreen trees such as ebony, oak and fig have broad leaves. Pine and spruce have needle-like leaves. There are some trees that shed all their leaves once a year. Such trees are called deciduous trees. These trees have many branches and broad leaves. They look bare after they shed all their leaves. Gulmohar, Sal and Champa are some deciduous trees. Pine, Spruce, Gulmohar, Sal. The following are a few adaptations of trees growing in forests. Forests in hot and rainy regions have mostly evergreen trees. These trees usually have thick, broad leaves with waxy surface so that rainwater can roll off easily. Forests in regions with warm or cold climates and less rainfall have mostly deciduous trees. These trees usually have thin, broad leaves to trap sunlight. These trees shed their leaves in the autumn. Winters in these regions are usually very cold and there is not enough sunlight. Shedding of leaves help the plants to reduce water loss and ensures that the trees are not damaged by snow and frost. Plants in grasslands Do not let the name of this habitat fool you. There are many more plants that live in the grasslands besides grasses. The climate in these regions is generally hot and dry. Some adaptations of plants in grasslands are as follows. The roots of the plants in grasslands grow deep into the ground to reach water. The stem of these are soft and flexible so that the plants do not break when strong winds blow. Infomine The soil in grasslands is extremely rich in organic material due to the fact that the above ground portion of grasses dies off annually, enriching the soil. Plants on mountains Mountains are highlands. The temperature of these varies from cold to extremely cold. Sometimes heavy snowfall occurs. Pine, fir, cedar, spruce, etc. are some plants growing in these regions. Some adaptations of trees on mountains are as follows. The trees are tall and straight with conical shapes. The shape allows snow to slip off the branches easily. The leaves of these plants are needle-like with waxy coating, ensuring that the snow does not collect on them and also prevent loss of water. Most trees in the mountains do not have flowers. Seeds are born inside cones, which protect the seeds from the cold. Cedar and fir. 
plants in deserts. The temperature in deserts is high, hot and dry. The rainfall is very little. Cacti, date palm and babool are some plants growing in these regions. Some adaptations of plants in deserts are as follows. Roots of plants grow deep into the soil to reach water. Some plants have a few small leaves and some have none at all. This prevents the plants from losing water through their leaves. In cacti, leaves are modified into needle-like spines to prevent loss of water. Stem contains chlorophyll and carries out photosynthesis. The stems of many desert plants, including cacti, are thick and fleshy and can store water. Cacti, date palm. Plants in coastal areas. The climate of coastal areas is usually hot and wet. The water is salty and trees adapt themselves to survive in such type of areas. Coconut, rubber, pepper, etc. are trees that grow along the coasts. Some adaptations of plants growing in coastal areas are as follows. The plants have waterproof, shiny leaves to protect them against drying out in salty water. The leaves of plants are thick and fleshy that can hold water. The roots of these plants are thick and tough to cling on to the rocks. Coconut, rubber, plants in marshy areas. The marshes are hot and damp areas where soil is clay and sticky in texture. It is capable of holding plenty of water and cannot hold much air. Only a few plants such as mangrove and reed can grow in such conditions. As the soil does not contain much air, the roots of trees like mangrove grows above the soil to get air. Such type of roots are called breathing roots. These roots have tiny openings at the tips through which gases can be exchanged. Mangrove, read. Up for review. Give two examples of each of the following. Number one, plants that grow in plains. Number two, plants that grow in deserts. Number three, plants that grow in coastal areas. Number four, plants that grow in marshy areas. Aquatic plants. Plants that live in water are called aquatic plants. They can be of three types, floating, fixed and submerged or underwater. Floating plants. Floating plants, as the name suggests, float on the surface of the water body. Water hyacinth and duckweed are examples of floating plants. Some adaptations of floating plants are as follows. The roots of these plants trail in the water and are not fixed to the ground. They have spongy stems full of air, which makes these plants able to float on water. Water hyacinth, duckweed, bladderwort. Info mine. Water hyacinths reproduce very quickly and can quickly cover the entire surface of ponds and lakes. This blocks out sunlight and oxygen from reaching the bottom of the water body, thus harming other aquatic plants and animals. Fixed plants. Fixed plants are those aquatic plants that grow in water with their roots fixed into the soil at the bottom of the water body. Lotus and water lily are the examples of fixed plants. Hydrilla, lotus, water lily. Some adaptations of fixed plants are as follows. The stems of these plants are thin, long and hollow, which help the leaves and flower reach the surface of the water and also allows them to float. The stalks have many air spaces which make them light. They are flexible and sway with the flow of water. The plants have large plate-like leaves with waxy coatings to protect them from rotting. The stomata are on the upper side of the leaves so that they can exchange gases easily. Submerged or underwater plants. Submerged or underwater plants grow completely under the water. These plants breathe underwater through their body surface, giving out oxygen underwater and thus supporting aquatic life. Tape grass and pondweed are examples of submerged plants. Tape grass, pondweed, water grass. Some adaptations of submerged plants are as follows. The roots of the plants are fixed into the soil under the water body. The stems of these plants are flexible so that they sway with the flow of water. The leaves are thin, narrow, 
ribbon-shaped and without stomata. Some unusual plants, insectivorous plants. Some plants grow in regions that have very less nutrients in the soil. The leaves or other parts of these plants are modified to trap and digest insects and other small creatures in order to obtain their nutrient requirements. Such plants are called insectivorous plants. Venus flytrap and pitcher plants are the examples of insectivorous plants. Some adaptations of insectivorous plants are as follows. Pitcher plant is shaped like a rolled up leaf, forming a tube-like structure called pitfall trap. There are little hair or tentacles inside the tube pointing towards the bottom of the tube. These tentacles ensure that the insect once entered does not get its way out. The bottom of the tube has gel-like substance that digests the trapped insect. The Venus flytrap has lobbed leaves with short stiff hair at the edges. When any small creature lands on the leaf, the lobes close very quickly and the animal gets trapped in its interlocking bristles. The plant then releases certain juices inside the leaf to digest the animal and take in the nutrients. Pitcher plant, Venus flytrap. Parasitic plants. Some plants cannot absorb nutrients from the soil. Instead, they absorb nutrients from other living plants. As they suck nutrients from other healthy plants, such plants are called parasitic plants. They usually cause harm to the plant they are living on. They have special root-like structures that grow into the host plant to absorb nutrients. Dodder and mistletoe are examples of parasitic plants. Find an answer. What are saprophytic plants? Dodder, mistletoe, witch weed. Take a look. Terrestrial plants. In forests, evergreen, ebony, oak, fig. Deciduous, gulmohar, sal, champa. In grasslands, in mountains, pine, fir, cedar, spruce. In deserts, cacti, date palm, babool. In coastal areas, coconut, rubber, pepper. In marshy areas, mangrove, reed. Aquatic plants, floating plants, hyacinth, duckweed. Fixed plants, lotus, water lily. Underwater plants, tape grass, pondweed.